Hi everyone and welcome to Math Sucks. This video is going to help you pass the Algebra 2 Common Core Regions. We're doing this one question at a time. For question 23 we have written in simplest form the fraction x cubed minus 9x over 9 minus x squared where x does not equal plus or minus 3 is equivalent to. So we have to simplify this. So let's write it over here so we can work with it. We have x cubed it's a 3, x cubed minus 9x all over 9 minus x squared. So right away we could take out, on the numerator we could take out a GCF of x, and we're left with x squared minus 9. And on the bottom we can do difference of two squares, and do 3 minus x and 3 plus x. So up here we actually can do a difference of two squares again, on the numerator because we have x squared minus 9, we have two perfect squares and a subtraction sign. Everything we need to do difference of two squares. We have x times x plus 3 times x minus 3 all over 3 minus x times 3 plus x. So here we can cancel things out, right? Because we have x plus 3, 3 plus x. So we know those are interchangeable with each other, right? 3 plus x is equal to x plus 3. And then we have x minus 3 over 3 minus x. So these actually cancel out to be negative 1 when they're on top of each other like this. So in fraction form, this becomes negative 1. So now we have negative 1 times x, which just gives us negative x. And that's our answer. So if we look back at our choices, we have choice 1 is negative x, and that's our answer. For question 24, we have, according to a study, 45% of Americans have type O blood. If a random number generator produces three digit values from 000 to 999, which value would represent those having type O blood? So 45% of Americans have type O blood. So if we have 000 to 999, that means we're going to have 1,000 total random people, right? So 1,000 total. So that's what's represented here. And now, uh, which values represent having type O? So we know that 45% of people have type O. So if we want type O, we, we need 45% of 1,000, which is going to be equal to 450. So which values would represent those having type O blood? So we know that we would need 450, but there's all these choices and they all look very similar. So we have to think about this. So, so really, when you have to count zero, as 1 here. So like let's say we had numbers 0 to 9. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So how many numbers do we have? We go up to 9, yeah, but how many numbers do we actually have here? We actually have 10 numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 total numbers. So it's one more than what you think it might be because of that 0. So when we have these different numbers to choose from and we want 450 numbers, we're going to want to look for 449, which is one less than 450. So that is going to be our answer, choice three. Here's question 25. For n and p greater than zero is the expression, and then we have this crazy looking expression, equivalent to this crazy looking expression. Justify your answer. Is this expression equal to this expression? That's what we want to know. So we so here we really want to know our rules for exponents and radicals. So I'm just going to write out a very simple uh, rule that will like be the basis for the rest to answer this question. So if we know that b to the one half is equal to radical b, we'll be able to answer this question. And whenever you take the radical of something, the square root of something, it always has a secret little two there. So so knowing that, let's answer this question. So we have p squared n to the 1 half So let's simplify this and try to get it in this, in this format here. So the first thing we're going to do is to multiply the exponents. So whenever exponents are in parentheses like this, we always multiply them together. So this becomes p to the 16th n to the 4th because 1 half times 8 will give you 4. And then here we have radical p to the 5th and to the 4th. So we can take out an n squared, because we just want to divide these by 2. 
Um, so P, P doesn't is easily divide by two though like that. So we can split this into P and P to the fourth. So when we do that, this P to the fourth times P will give you P to the fifth. That's why we can do that. So, but if we take the radical of each, we're left with P to the second, P to the fourth, radical P to the fourth gives us P squared and radical P. So notice now we can combine some like terms here. We have we have two p's, 16, 17, 18, just adding the exponents together. p to the 16th times p to the second would be 16 plus two, which gives you 18. And then we have these two n's, n to the fourth and n to the second. Just add the like, um, the two exponents together, four plus two, and we get six. And then we're left with radical p. And we see that that is equal to what they said originally, to the 18th and to the 6th radical p. So we know that we are right. Need more practice? Check out mathsucks.org for more questions. Link below. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Happy calculating!